your roast master, Dean Martin. And tonight's very special man of the week, Kurt Dutchett. You know, a lot has been said about our guest of honor, Kirk Douglas, and he's here tonight to deny it. <laughs> we in the industry know that Kirk's always been a little depressed. He's been that way ever since he looked in the mirror and found out he was not Burt Lancaster. <laughs> because of that, he's not exactly a bundle of laughs. As a matter of fact, there's a wax statue of Kirk in the Hollywood Wax Museum, and the statue gets invited to more parties than he does. <laughs> it is hard to believe that in Kirk's senior year in college, he was voted class humorist, which gives you an idea of the kind of laughs they had in that class. <laughs> it was between Kirk and Senator Montoya. your friends and uh, admirers who couldn't be here tonight. However, they sent you telegrams. I'd like to read some of them. The first one is from Raquel Welch. Dear Kirk, I just saw your latest movie, and I can't tell you how much I envy you. You're the only person in Hollywood who has more cleavage than I do. <laughs> Here's one uh, from the president, Mr. President Nixon. My dear Kirk, I've always been fascinated by the dimple in your chin. It seems like the perfect place for me to hide the Watergate tapes. <laughs> Everyone knows Ted Knight as the obnoxious newscaster on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. He's a man who could succeed in any profession he chose. Why he chose to louse up show business, I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ted Knight. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> you know, playing a television news man has got me in a habit of researching my material. On the subject of uh, Kirk Douglas, I've, I've uncovered some little-known background facts. Uh, Kirk didn't just get to be a bad actor overnight. <laughs> he struggled at it. <laughs> and a lot of other jobs, too. <laughs> and how many of you out there know how versatile this man really is? I'd like to read to you a, a list of the jobs that this multifaceted man has worked at. <clears throat> he was a window washer in the Holland Tunnel. <laughs> he was a stress engineer for a trust company. A lifeguard in a drunk tank. And a lookout in a dude ranch. And when the guests would step down from their horses at the old corral, Kirk would yell, look out, look out. That was his job there. <laughs> he was also a bouncer at a brassiere factory. <laughs> and he achieved his greatest artistic success when he got a job with the Maxwell House Coffee Company. You all know the slogan, good to the last drop. Well, when it got to the last drop, it was Kirk Douglas who came out and shook it off. <laughs> Kirk... Ron Crosby has been on my show many times in the last nine years, and I'll never forget the first time I met him. It was 10 minutes ago backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Norm Crosby. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Dean, because it has been a long time, and there have been a lot of shows, and I, I think that... Uh, we're friends, and we have a pretty good rapport with each other. <laughs> I cannot see why you and Gre Gregarious, the, uh, the, the executive procurer, I do not understand how you selected a man like Kirk Douglas to roast. I really mean that because this is not a man to be exercised and regaled with frivolity. <laughs> Kirk, uh, Kirk. Is a serious equestrian performer. He is a man who has trod the broads of Broadway drama. He should be raised to a pinnacle. I really mean it. With all 
the misconstruction and the political disruption that's going on in the world today, we need a man like this to offer to the youths of America as an example. The misconstrued youths need. They need heroes. They need other sandwiches. They need guys like this. Tell them about this giant. Tell them about the, the, his humble beginning, how he was poor, how he had hand-me-down clothes. One boy with six sisters. The only kid in the history of Amsterdam, New York, who played football in a skirt. <laughs> and his sisters loved him. They adored him. They kept going over to him, saying, isn't he cute? Isn't he adorable? In fact, they did it so much, a whole piece came out. <laughs> this is a great actor. He is a dedicated artist. Kirk is a dedicated artist. I remember in Carnival, when he had a hang from a trapezoid, and he had a learn. <laughs> He did. He had to learn to be an extortionist. You know, the ones with no bones that bend over and do tricks. The one trick he had to learn was scary, really, truly. He had to bend over backwards, form a circle, and put his toes in his nostrils. That's not funny. If he ever sneezed, he could have disappeared right in his own anatomy. Yes, tell your kids about Kirk Douglas. He is a man of perverse talent, depth, and circumvention. And I am very proud to be a part of this testimony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Burns and Mr. Avery Schreiber. <laughs> uh, tonight, I'm going to review some of the actual true highlights of the life and career of our illustrious and distinguished guest of honor, Kirk Douglas, a man of whom Danny Thomas once said, Kirk was born in Amsterdam, New York. <laughs> and how proud Kirk's father was when the doctor emerged from the delivery room and announced, It's a boy, Mr. Douglas, and he's perfectly normal, except for one little thing. His navel's in his chin. <laughs> Broadway's success brought him a Hollywood contract. Perhaps his finest performance was in the film Lust for Life, where he played the artist Vincent Van Gogh. Now, there was one memorable scene in this picture, and the director was amazed when he saw how Kirk performed it. No, no, Kirk. I told you to cut off your ear, not your rear. <laughs> was soon an international star, and at the request of the U.S. State Department, he toured South America and Europe as a goodwill ambassador. The high point of his life came during his visit to the Netherlands, where he was granted a private audience with the Queen. Hi, Kirk. Are you interested in a tour of the dikes? <laughs> I'm sure most of us are familiar with the name Rich Little. Last year, Rich was the comedian of the Julie Andrews Hour. I watched him every week, and I couldn't believe it. He got less laughs than Julie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, America's greatest impressionist, greatest, Mr. Rich Little. My name is Burt Lancaster. <laughs> and I'd like to tell you a few things about my good friend, Kurt Douglas. Kurt and I made five motion pictures together. And as far as I'm concerned, there were five too many. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back to the beginning. Kirk was born in Amsterdam, New York. At school at the age of six, his screen image was already beginning to take shape. When asked to read before the class, Kirk said, <clears throat> See, Dick, run. <laughs> See, Jane, run. See, Dick and Jane and Spot and Puff run. <laughs> Dick run after Puff. See Dick catch up to Puff. See Puff scratch Dick. <laughs> mm. 
pussy dick grab buff! <laughs> See, dick start twisting buff! And twisting, twisting! And see, dick smash buff right in the face! And see, dick run out for In 1960, Kirk made one of his most successful motion pictures. Now, this is the picture with Tony Curtis out of those now famous words. I love you, Spartacus. You know you did that. Thank you I still think the best impression Rich does is Richard Nixon. In fact, his Nixon impression is so good, the other day he got B.B. Rebozo to buy him a house. <laughs> Here's one of the top reporters. Here's one of the top recording artists in the country, a great country western singer, and pretty too. She's so pretty, I'd watch her if she was on radio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lynn Anderson. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. You know, an actor is usually known by the parts he gets, but Kirk Douglas has become famous for the parts he loses. <laughs> picture Scalawag, which was produced by his wife, Anne. Kirk loses a leg. In uh, The Vikings, he lost an eye. Uh, as Vincent Van Gogh, he lost an ear. In Champion, he lost his front teeth. In Young Man with a Horn, uh, he lost his lip. Kirk, I think there's just one little thing you haven't lost. <laughs> Thank you very much. You did Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my real funny man, Mr. Jackie Gale. Kirk, I always defend the man of the week at the dais, and I want to tell you relax and enjoy yourself and just lay back, because it's all been downhill since the champion. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a fan of yours for years. In fact, I remember a picture you did with Johnny Cash that was financed by an Indian tribe. I wouldn't say lost money, but the Indian changed the name of the reservation to Wounded Bank. <laughs> I'm getting them now, Dean. Started slow, but I'm rolling. We'll get rid of it. Should have had Norm Crosby's act. <laughs> Norm Crosby, I love him because he always kids himself about a hearing aid. Meanwhile, he's having better time than the rest of us. While we're here, he's listening to the ball game. <laughs> And I'll tell you something, one day his hearing aid wasn't working, but he had no trouble hearing the girl yell, my husband's car is in the driveway. <laughs> I think it's nice of Don Rickles to be here to pay tribute tonight, Kurt, because he's a gentle soul. He attacks people only out of hurt and anguish. <laughs> and if you believe that, you believe Nixon's got a chance for a third term. <laughs> he's a very terrible guy, Don Rickles. He gave 30% of his income for piranha research. <laughs> Tell you something. That's right, Don comes on with a lot of venom and hate, but under that layer of venom and hate, there's a layer of warmth and love. Under that layer of warmth and love, there's another layer of venom and hate. <laughs> like he did a picture about his life, will it? <laughs> Kurt, I told you I'd get him, Dean. You give me a couple of minutes. Stop dozing off. Watch the spot. You gotta go like that. You go till you get him. Kirk, Kirk, I respect you. I'll tell you why. Because you're my kind of guy. Because you came up the hard way. Because I was born a poor kid in Brooklyn. I swear, I struggled all my life. And I came from a poor family in Brooklyn. Poor Jewish family. We were an unlucky family. I remember once for the holidays, we opened the door, let the Messiah in, and we got robbed. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Dean. They grabbed the hat, the matzahs, my grandfather's Duke Ellington album. <laughs> But, Kirk, I want to tell you, with all the ribbing aside, you're my kind of man, and just like the title of the picture, you're still a champion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. With all my stuff in here. And now we 
comes to Don. But a lot of people wonder why Don is so mean. Don's always been mean. When Don was born, the doctor slapped him and Don punched him in the mouth. <laughs> Here is Don Rickle. <laughs> I've seen Kirk in many, many movies, and I say from the bottom of my heart as an actor, he is weak. <laughs> but Kirk... <laughs> you and I know, if you didn't have that little ripple in your chin, the freaky jaw, <laughs> and the trick-or-treat voice, just... <laughs> You'd be like the rest of us. Girls. <laughs> but Kirk, you've always had us at the house when you had the biggies over. The last big name they had was Lyle Talbot's cousin. <laughs> Al Bergman. But Kirk is a great star, and I've proven that many, many times, because every time I've come to his home, he's always been in... Leotard shorts, no sweatshirt, just standing in the middle of the room going, Lana! We threw some raw meat on the floor, he ate it and died. I will say to you as the audience out there tonight, Kirk Douglas knows Burt Lancaster personally. <laughs> Burt Lancaster would be here tonight, but he was in a circus act in Germany and climbed up the rope too fast. <laughs> and is now in his home in Malibu going, Ugh. <laughs> that laughing, Kirk. But I will never forget, and this is a true story, a little anecdote about Kirk Douglas. Kirk and his lovely wife, Ann, were celebrating their 19th wedding anniversary. And they had a little dinner party. And they said, Don, and they never told us it was their anniversary. True, Kirk? <laughs> and they invited us to their home. And my wife, Barbara, who I married a lovely lady, God bless her. She is known to me as Valium. <laughs> when Pearl Harbor was attacked, she was the one that looked up and said, there's some destruction. <laughs> there's some dummy girl in the front going, I hope I find some guy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, this is the truth. And Kirk said, we're gonna have a little dinner party. And I said, fine, as you well know, Kirk. And Ann invited us, and Barbara and I pulled up, and I saw her in the driveway. And I do not say this because we all struggle in life to attain success. And I pulled up in the driveway, and I saw a Rolls Royce, and it said FAS1. And I got all excited. I said, Barbara, Frank Sinatra, that's his car. What a night! Frank Sinatra's here. And my wife said, pull yourself together. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, don't be an idiot. Pull yourself together. You have all his albums. What are you gonna do, go crazy? <laughs> we walked in, there were 12 people, not stars. I figured you would see Gregory Peck's, uh, Charlton Heston's, that school. There was nothing. There was Harry Dickman, Saul Katz, Lou Furpo, Marco Gambananzo, who I never asked what he did. Figuring I could be in the bay going, <laughs> cheer up, Kirk. I said, uh, Kirk, it's an exciting night. And with that, somebody tapped me on the shoulder. And Dean Martin cherishes this man as I do, because I got news. The guy we're talking about, really, in my, I can only speak for myself, I think Dean would agree, he is like, the thing, you know, it's like an image. And the shoulder. And the voice said, uh, hey, Pally, uh, how do you want the pizza? Crisp, crisp, crisp pizza, pizza, crisp. I said, um, 
uh, what were you saying, Kirk? He said, and a guy, and in my new movie, these two people are coming up. What a picture we're doing. And the voice said, hey, come on, pal, I'm asking you three times now, how do you want the pizza? And with one turn, with a drink in my hand, I turned around and I said, will you stop bothering me, Frank? I'm talking to people. I don't care how you make the pizza. <laughs> Here's our displeased man of the week, Mr. Kirk Douglas. Thank you, thank you, Dean. You know, it's really a, a great honor to be chosen man of the week. I don't know what I did to deserve this honor. But I promise you one thing, I won't do it again. <laughs> you know, the other day I asked Dean now, who was gonna be on the dais? And he said, we got Crosby and Burns. If I thought he meant Bing and George and I got stuck with Norm and Jack. <laughs> oh, and then there's Burns and Schreiber, the finest comedy team since Haldeman and Ehrlichman. <laughs> Rich Little, whose talent is only matched by his last name. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 Rich. No. Rich, that was the best impression I've ever seen of Frank Gorshin. <laughs> no. no, you know, no, seriously, seriously, a few months ago, I was watching Rich Little with my boys on a television show. And Rich Little was doing an impression of me. And as I watched Rich Little, I tried to go along with the scene he was doing. And it was something like, you know, those fat bellies with the big cigars, they can't beat me. I can beat them. You know, I can beat them. Now, I'm going along like this, and my son Peter turns around and says, Dad, look, he can do you better than you. <laughs> Miss Lynn Anderson <laughs> arose among these many thorns. <laughs> I want to thank you for showing that clip from Scallywag, and it's true what you heard. My wife, Anne, is the producer of Scallywag, and as a result, Rona Barrett gave out a headline story. Kirk Douglas gets job by sleeping with producer. <laughs> What a night this has been. I haven't enjoyed myself so much since I had root canal work. <laughs> I'm all kidding aside, I'm a pretty lucky guy. You know, show business, show business is a tough racket. Not many survive. Look at these casualties. <laughs> I want to thank my guest tonight, and especially the guest of honor, our man of the week, Kirk Douglas. And in closing, Kirk, I just want to say we don't usually get stars of your caliber on the show, but tonight we had to lower our standards. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm on my way home. Catherine, now warm up the hot chocolate.